Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace a distributor in a Mercury Villager or Nissan Quest. I believe this is a 99 model. As these vehicles age, start racking up the mileage, I believe this one has uh, about 210,000. The distributor starts binding in the motor or within itself and it doesn't uh, operate properly once the engine gets warmed up. So it starts throwing out codes, starts running real rough, starts stalling, stuff like that. So. I changed the O2 sensor and whatnot. I'm going to change the distributor now. I was going to attempt to replace this with the one from the salvage yard. However, this one is out of a 98 vehicle, and the 99 vehicle is different. They also have a different color, I guess, intake manifold over there. That's kind of a clue. Just take a close look at it. Make sure they have the same connections before you go pulling one from the salvage yard, and you should be good to go. Now, if you pull one from the salvage yard, go ahead, take it out, and spin the shaft to make sure that the shaft spins freely. Put the cap on it, set it down somewhere, and make sure you spin it, and that should spin freely without any friction or any feeling of binding or anything like that and you should be okay now they usually give you a 30 to six seven month warranty on the ones out of the salvage yard you may want to take them up on a warranty because these things new cost about three hundred and fifty dollars and out of the salvage yard you could get them for about forty dollars The battery is dead on the vehicle, so I cannot pull the codes and give those to you. When I pop the hood on the vehicle, it appears that somebody has replaced this distributor with one from the salvage yard already. The owner didn't indicate that she had any knowledge of this, so I'm not sure how long this distributor has been in the car. So what I'm going to do is take it out of the vehicle and see if it feels like there's any binding or anything on the distributor. First thing you want to do is get a large flat tip screwdriver. Take these two screws off. Take the distributor cap off of the distributor. Once they're loose, go ahead and carefully work it off and set it to the side. Next, you want to unplug the two plugs that connect the distributor, wire the dist distributor to the vehicle. You got one here, one here. This one has a tab on the bottom of it. You squeeze and pull off. And the other one has a tab on the connector that you squeeze and pull apart. So let me disconnect these. There's the bottom of the other one that I had to squeeze to get it to unlock. And that's how the other one came loose. Sometimes they have a gasket in the plug, so make sure you don't lose that. It's probably in this part here. There's a gasket down in there to help seal it off from moisture or water. Now, if you're just replacing the rotor, you take the screw loose on the bottom side of the flat disc of the rotor and unscrew it. But if you're taking the whole distributor out, you get a... I think it's a 12 millimeter and you take that bolt loose and then this distributor will work its way out. Before you take that bolt out and uh, lift that distributor off, you want to make special note to the orientation of the rotor and the distributor mounting location because that will affect the timing. So. You may want to even mark how that washer sits on that frame with a little scribe or maybe even some kind of uh, felt tip marker or something that will mark it 
So when you lower the replacement distributor back down onto the engine, you have to make sure that it gets in the same orientation. Sometimes people will mark the distributor from the housing of the distributor to the pad of the engine so that they make sure that the orientation is right. This one was probably marked to the previous vehicle, so I'm going to mark it to this vehicle right now. That black mark on there indicates where it is located in time. And as you can see, where that thing stopped, it's pointing straight back just about. Uh, if I use that like a sight, it would point straight back to maybe here. This, where that heater hose goes back there. So you want to make sure that orientation is right when you take this one off and put the replacement one on. I removed the 12 millimeter bolt from the base of the distributor. Now I can remark that to the hole if I want to make sure, just an extra precaution, making sure I put the replacement one in in the right orientation. Now there's the black mark I put on the housing. Now I'm going to grab the distributor and work it up and off of the engine like that. The bottom part of the distributor has gears and teeth in it like that. So when you lift it off the engine, the rotor is actually going to rotate. So you want to see the position of that rotor when you get it lifted up and off of the engine. Because when you slide the replacement one back down on the engine, you want that rotor orientation to be like this one is when it comes off. So work it up nice and slow and watch, watch how it rotates when it comes off. So when you go to slide the replacement one on, you want to make sure that rotor orientation is like that one is there. To kind of test this, what you can do is grab the shaft down there. You may want to put some gloves on because it's oily and rotate it back and forth and see that it rotates in a smooth fluid motion there shouldn't be any kind of binding or any kind of funny feeling to how this thing rotates and this one it actually feels like it's binding a little bit i can hear it clicking as it goes around and that's probably not good i have this other one from the salvage yard and it rolls nice and smooth doesn't feel bumpy it actually spins around when I turn it like that and when I try to spin this one it won't spin it just turns and stops and like I said this one here you can spin it around and it spins around a few times next you want to take the replacement distributor set it down in the hole and make sure that you have a good seal on it so if you're going on with a new one and it doesn't have the rotor on there, go ahead and screw the rotor on there and turn the rotor around to where it needs to be to hit the uh, distributor right when it goes on. Take the replacement one and set it in place and ease it down on there and the gears will catch and it'll drop down onto the assembly. Once you have it down onto the assembly, you want to align the hole the way the other one was, or if you're replacing it, putting the old one back on like I am, you want to make sure that it's lined up where it was when you took it off, which I need to turn it just a little bit so that it's down on there. Now you want to take the 12 millimeter bolt and secure it back into the base assembly. Once you get it set down in place, make sure your rotor's on and the screw is secure. Plug your two plugs in. Carefully fit your distributor cap down on the distributor. And if you're putting a new one on, make sure that pin goes down into that hole on this distributor. Get it lined up nice and even and then put your two screws in make sure your wires are on and secure then go and start the car it should fire right up 
If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.